Hi, I'm Rich with Inside HPC. We're here at SC15 in Austin, Texas, and we're here in the Emerging Technologies area talking with Isotope, Mr. Peter Hopton. How are you doing today, sir? I'm doing very well, Rich. How are you doing? Good, good. You know, Peter, we, we, we came up here to see what's going on with the cutting edge stuff, and I was reading about Exynest. And what can you tell us about Exynest? What is this thing? Exynest is part of the Europeans' race to an exascale supercomputer. There are effectively two competing races. One of the races is formed of five projects. Exynest is one of those projects. It's the project that does the interconnect, the cooling, the power, and the mechanicals. Um, it's then accompanied by a variety of other projects, each doing other items. For example, X and Node are doing the nodes, which are ARM-based, with a, a coherent cache and uh, Unimem architecture. Uh, so as far as X and S is concerned, we get these different devices, very, very high density, want to be very closely packed together, and we call them. And we've been selected because we can call things three-dimensionally. We can call package on package, mezzanine on mezzanine, you know, and that allows that density um, to be achieved, uh, which helps drive the energy efficiency of the components up. Yeah. So, so this this uses a liquid cooling, right? Is it is it a, a direct hot water? What what's going through there? What is the? So the electronics are immersed in a liquid fluoroplastic. It's a plastic that uh, is liquid at room temperature, um, and it's uh, fully fluorinated, so it's inert. Um, this, this coolant moves around very, very quickly as heat's applied to it. It's very naturally convective. Um, it's contained within our blades, and when you apply heat from the electronics, it rises, and then it dumps that heat to the shell of the blade, where it goes into a cabinet level um, cooling backplane using water. And that enables us to have hot water input. So um, with the existing technology that we have, which is commercially available, we've demonstrated 53 Celsius inlet water without any loss of performance on Xeon 2690's running Limpac. So uh, people can have performance exceeding the published Intel Limpac numbers all the way up to 53 Celsius inlet, which means for operators they don't have to invest in chiller equipment to run their HPC apparatus. So for this XNS thing, you know, using ARM, I always thought of ARM as low power, that, you know, it's in our phones, our phones don't get hot. What kind of density are we talking about? Lots of, like, hundreds of cores or, or what? Thousands. Thousands, thousands, yeah. thousands and thousands of cores, yes. Oh, okay. um, and it's about packing these nice low power cores in tight enough mm -hmm. and close enough together, sharing, uh, you know, large amount of memory architecture, the memory being stacked to, so that uh, you end up with a single blade uh, about the size of a, a traditional server blade, probably emitting around two and a half kilowatts of heat. Mm -hmm. so, so what's the next step? I mean, you announced you got the project started, you got the various players involved. Is there a prototype come next? What, what, what? We have two stages. The first is to make a, a prototype which will also become a product based upon um, ARM processors up to about 800 watts a blade. Mm -hmm. um, and then to go double-sided, double density as we call it, um, which is uh, moving to, um, <laughs> I need like that one. <laughs> yeah, double sided. Double yeah, density. Yeah, yeah. It's a bit of a blast from the past. Right. But double sided, double density in terms of the cooling in mm -hmm. order to move to uh, a system that's dense enough to achieve exascale. And that will output a prototype in 2018 that will be exascalable if we uh, achieve our ambitions within the project.